First up, we're looking for approval of the agenda. Motion and support, questions, comments, or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Public comment. Public, you have five minutes to comment. Just give us your name. Hello, public. Undersheriff, you getting up? No. No. I'm okay. Not. okay. I have no comments, sir. <laughs> uh, moving on to committee items and minutes from the October 12th meeting. Looking for a motion. Motion and support. Sarah, do you have something? Or? No, I was just telling <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Blackman DDA. Debbie, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, thank you. Good morning, Debbie Kelly with the Enterprise Group. We provide staffing services, as you know, to the Blackman Charter Township Downtown Development Authority. Um, Amy and I have sent you a memo kind of highlighting the last six months, different activity that's occurred at the Blackman DDA. Um, so I won't bore you and go through it, um, but I'm wondering if there's any questions, concerns that I can address this morning. Our next board meeting is this Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. If you'd all like to come and join us nice and early. Debbie, just a one comment from me. Uh, I did see the note here, and I knew of the slight controversy with the cornfield there near the DDA area, and it's going to not be cornfields any more than I guess, correct? Correct. That is correct. And part of that airport property as well, yeah. Right, that's correct. Large impact on revenue or minimal? Probably. 2000 a year. Okay. Okay, commissioners, any questions or comments for Debbie? Thank you. Thank you. See you next month. Next up is the airport DEQ brownfield loan contract approval, Kent Maher. Good morning. Um, this body uh, previously by resolution approved application for this loan and it's uh, wound its way through the bureaucracy and is now presented to you as a final contract. It's a million dollars. Um, there is about 10,000 that's reserved for uh, environmental consulting closeout costs, but the balance of that would be used toward our landfill relocation expense, which by the way is underway. Generally, this is a 15-year um, loan or 11-year loan, five years, um, no payment, no interest, and then the balance is paid over the next um, it looks like it's uh, five years, no payments, no interest, and then the next 10 years it's paid back at 1.5% interest. So very attractive interest rate and payment schedule. So it's presented as a contract for your uh, consideration. Okay, any questions or comments for Kent? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to send it on to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Kent. Thank you. Moving right along, we have the undersheriff on awarding the jail medical services contract. Undersheriff Cole. Good morning. I have before you, I'm looking for approval to award the uh, contract for jail medical services to in adva uh, advanced correctional health care. Um, to give you a little bit of background here, uh, in August 2015, our current provider um, exercised his 90-day out clause, terminating his services on November 30th of this year. Uh, that was a bit unexpected to us. So we moved forward, created an RFP process, published that RFP. Um, we had a number of uh, published and mandated uh, timelines within there. One of those was for interested vendors uh, that wanted to submit a bid that they needed to conduct a walkthrough of our facility so they could see our medical clinics, understand what we had, um, we didn't want them bidding blindly, assuming we had something that we did not, etc. Uh, so those were conducted. Um, any questions were to be directed to us in writing, and then uh, all replies would be provided to all vendors. And the proposals were opened on that Friday, October 30th, with the uh, county clerk. Uh, two bids were received from Advanced Correctional Healthcare and Concierge Healthcare Staffing Services. Uh, we selected Advanced Correctional Healthcare based on the depth uh, of their bid and their experience of their services. They are in 11 county jails in the state of Michigan. Um, they're also serving 17 different states with uh, county jails. 
um, includes 40 hours of registered nurse services, 96 hours of LPN or licensed practical nurse, nurse services, and 72 hours of certified medical assistant services, which is slightly more than what we currently had with our current vendor. Um, there's a number of services they provide. Uh, the difference between what our current arrangement is and advanced correctional health care is this is essentially one turnkey service uh, versus our contract now. We pay for medical services at the jail um, that would be doctors and nurses and then all extra items outside of that. Prescriptions, durable medical goods, medical waste, um, a num number of other things, testing, those things are paid for by us, uh, direct bill to us. Um, advanced Correctional Healthcare is a turnkey service. We pay one amount, they take care of all those things. They're able to bid a number of these services on a, kind of an economy of scale because they serve so many areas. So, given the um, background and experience of Advanced Correctional Healthcare, also the depth of their bid, uh, they talked about. Um, how they would manage lawsuits and, and legal situations the other company did not. The other important factor was the uh, other company, Concierge Correctional Healthcare Staffing, did not have any experience in county jails in Michigan, not supplying medical services uh, front to back. Advanced Correctional Healthcare is also governed by a doctor out of Monroe, Michigan, uh, so close proximity, uh, and that doctor would prescribe all the drugs and essentially be responsible for the contracts. We felt comfortable having him very nearby. Concierge Correctional Service did not um, address or name what physician or what doctor would be governing their services or where that individual is based at. Um, it appeared to be a proposal that was lacking in some areas of significant concern for us. So <coughs> the dollar amount uh, for the um, initial proposal here or, or the award of the contract is $535,318 uh, for the beginning year. The, the rate increases in that contract um, are tied to the consumer price index, but not to exceed 2.5% uh, after Jim Latham's uh, help with understanding the consumer price index. Um, it can have some pretty wild swings in it, so we have that cap in there at 2.5% maximum. Um, that is obviously a significant amount, but to give yourself some understanding, um, with our current vendor coordinated uh, care, uh, we're paying about $410,000, and that's just for the medical services at the jail. Um, outside of that, uh, we have easily approximately $100,000 to $110,000 in additional cost, depending on the year. Uh, to give you some kind of benchmark to put that against, um, last year we were at about $529,000 roughly in spend, including the medical care contract, um, and then the things that would be included within this contract, x-rays, prescriptions, durable medical goods, medical waste, all these kind of things. Uh, this year alone, we're at $509,000 in spend. Um, we still have one month left to pay, December being the month for health care. So we would be above that $535,000 cap this year. But most importantly, the line item that governs uh, medical services within the jail, um, that's fully budgeted and can handle this contract. The budget is $692,000 for that line item. However, we did take a reduction in that line item for 2016 as part of our budget drawback, and that was a $20,000 reduction. So if you looked at the five-year term of this contract, um, and you assume the maximum increase of 2.5%, we would still be under the threshold of that line item for these services. Julie. In the document that you presented to us on page 29 of 54, the, the bold item under the area of advanced purchasing program, it states, based on the ADP of 347, potential savings for the Jackson County Jails are estimated to be more than 94000 Sorry. You said 29? Yes. Excuse this. Um, and of document. your document, it may be page 20. Because, um, when I said 29, that would be of our um, online document, board doc. So you may find it 20 of 21, if that helps, at the bottom. Yeah. So <clears throat> I do see that. Um, they... I, I'm not sure if they didn't have the numbers when they, when they submitted the bid or if they were not aware that we were paying for um, a number of these things outside of the contract or what our current arrangement was. Um, so that figure, I don't know where that came from. Um, but for the first year of this contract, we would be we would be under what we were going to spend this year, assuming that nothing changed and we had to pay for another month of, of coordinated care. Uh, we would exceed that 535. Um, they are, there is. I think some ability to leverage some savings within here um, and one of the reasons that we took a reduction in that line item in 2016 uh, was because of the success of um, not having to pay for 
um, what I would call uh, care at the hospital. Uh, we're able to enroll those inmates in Medicare and Medicaid, um, assuming they're eligible, which most of them are. That was part of the reason for the reduction. Um, I don't know where the $94,000 in savings came from. Um, I think they were assuming that uh, 692 was our total spend, um, and, and we were spending all of that. But there's, there's things outside of this contract that we have to pay for, um, like those critical care services and things like that. Thank you. Under, if I get a couple of comments and a couple of questions. One, I was kind of taken by surprise when I saw it in the board packet. I didn't realize we were going out for uh, an RFP, but I talked to Mike, and I then got to looking through uh, the packet, and it seems like a very thorough, uh, good contract for us. Uh, and I was going to ask the total amount that we're spending now, but you've covered that. Out of curiosity, they talk about doing x-rays. Do we do those at the jail now, or do we go to Allegiance for those? We go to a outside facility to do those. Um, we either go to Jackson Radiology to do those or the hospital if the treatment is um, necessary. So if this company is doing them there, it's less transport of prisoners outside the jail too? That's correct. Less movement of inmates for um, what I would call um, non-life-threatening uh, type of x-rays. And is there, I thought I had looked all through the document, but is there an out clause in here? The current company's got a 90-day one. Is there one in this one? There is, uh, and, and I took issue with that. Um, there's a 30-day out clause for, for us, but I explained to them, I said, that's, that's kind of unrealistic. I said, because we had a 90-day out clause in our current contract, and from the time we were notified to the time we assembled the RFP, publishing, review, opening the bids, uh, there's no way that anybody, any county can make a 30-day process knowing this has to go before um, a board for approval and, and specified motion. So there's a 30-day out clause, but it's frankly unrealistic. Any chance that we could get them to change that or were they first? I, I that told them, I said, you know, you can change the, the client contract portion to 120 days. I said, if I'm going to switch vendors, I'll give you 120 days notice because it's not like one of those things that I can... Uh, you know, just get a new gasoline contract and start filling up at station X as opposed to Y. Um, I got to have somebody there. It's not as though I can uh, just go without a doctor and nurses at the jail facility. Um, they said that uh, that would be fine. They said they could change it, um, but it's, it's 30 days out for the customer. Okay. Uh, and I was very glad to see that great detail on their take on lawsuits. I'm not sure how that's going to relate to us because typically we're going to get sued too, I think, if something happens. But I'm glad for their position on that. Uh, can you say why the current contract was, uh, or current provider pulled with a 90-day clause and how much time was left on theirs? Uh, we had to go out to bid in 2016. Um, I think it was March of 2016, March of April 2016. Uh, that contract had extended its life beyond the, um, beyond the approval, and we were slated to go out to RFP. So it is a little bit earlier. Um, as far as why Coordinated Care um, decided to opt out, um, I think it was mainly personal reasons. It was nothing uh, to do with, with the arrangement or the service ser services provided. I think uh, he just decided he wanted to go in another direction. Okay, and then the last question for me. Would Allegiance have been able to bid on this, or are they not capable of providing this type of service? Or I don't think they are capable of providing this type of service. Um, now, we did have conversations uh, with our current provider, and he had indicated that he felt as though there was going to be some interest by um, a, a portion of Allegiance Hospital, and I don't know what that was or who it was. Uh, so we explained to him to please make sure to let them know that we're going to be publishing this RFP um, on the published date. Um, we left it open, um, and we only had two individuals bid on it, two companies bid on it. So um, it was published. It was put out there. Um, whether they decided not to or they were not capable to get those services, that I don't know. And the current providers on staff at Allegiance, correct? Yes, yes correct. Okay. Thank you for all the <coughs> answers. Uh, commissioners, any other questions? Julie? My final question is to the administrator's office. Why is this coming in front of agencies and affairs and not personnel and finance? Yeah, it, it, well, whispering over here. Uh, because this would be normally where it's come to the sheriff's department. If I may, Mike. Go right ahead. Board policy states that when we departmentalized our <coughs> Uh, committee system that we would not play favoritism with different boards or different committees and that agencies that report to a, com a certain committee would also be bringing forward all their contracts to go to the full board because there was no point in having it not be not be before this body because you were cognizant and responsible to the sheriff's department and were aware of other issues from following it normally that's the reason why thank you for that explanation 
regard to that 30-day out clause for the for us, I, I I just assume keep that because you know obviously we're going to know if we want to leave and we can start six months ahead of time. But at the same time, if something drastic happens and we feel we need to move along rather quickly and move heaven and earth to get it done, the 30 days it would be a help as opposed to tying our own hands because you know it's like an employee who's going to quit. They know they're going to quit. If they may, they may give you two weeks, but they knew really six weeks ago or whatever it was. Sure. Same thing with us. Point taken, and I'll make sure they keep that in there. Okay, we'd be looking for a motion to send us on to the full board. So moved. Motion and support. Additional questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Under Chair. Thank you. Next up is equalization with the, I think, a modified apportionment report. Yep, that's Ruth. all I have for you today is uh, the revised apportionment report. Leone had a, a vote for public safety millage on the 3rd, so that requires that we revise the apportionment report. It has to be into the state by the end of the month. Questions, commissioners, if not a motion to send it to the full board? No. Motion in support. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. District court, District court quarterly report. Good morning. Um, quarterly report, as usual, is uh, posted on our link on your website for you to review. Hopefully, you have reviewed that. Um, usually, what I do is try to pick out a few. Uh, High points. Um, our caseload right now, uh, we're up a little bit. We're up about 200 cases from where we were at this time last year, which um, I guess is a good thing. We're not declining. We're staying pretty steady. Uh, our collections report, we're up about 94,000 um, from where we were at this time last year through September. So that's a good thing, too, that collections are up. Our collections department is doing a very, very uh, good job of chasing down um, old fines and costs and warrants and things of that nature. Uh, in reference to our uh, revenue and expenditures, we're almost on target. Uh, through September, we should have been at about 74% for each. Our revenues were at about 69% and expenditures were at about 73%. So um, we're not far off there. One of the things that I do want to bring up is if you looked at our web page, there is a new link there. Um, it's called Public Satisfaction Survey. Uh, that is a survey that uh, the State Court Administrative Office now is mandating uh, on a yearly basis. And I posted the results from the 2014. It includes 2013 and 14. Um, I would like to mention, as I'm pretty proud of it, that our numbers went up considerably from 2013 to 2014. And we just finished our 2015 surveys last week. So hopefully when those numbers come in, I'll post those as well. Commissioners, any questions? Thanks, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Moving on to community corrections, I believe, correct? Yes, I had the next two items on the agenda are our two grants that we have, community corrections and mental health court. Um, all I'm looking for today is the, um, the okay, the authorization to accept the funds. Um, the new grants fiscal year started in uh, October, so we're already doing it. I just need the uh, okay from this board so that we can send that on to the state so that they know that our board has approved that. Tammy, I've got to make one note on the community corrections one, and that is that there's a note uh, with a paperwork that it was had received, I think, prior approval. And just because of timing, it couldn't get to our full board meeting. So an email was sent out, and community corrections members had a chance to ask questions about it or uh, oppose the submission of it. I don't think anybody did. So I think that's more accurate than saying that we approved it technically. Uh, but it's only because of timing and not anybody's fault. So, and I am supportive Correct. of the grant. So, so we'd be looking for a motion to approve the community corrections grant. So. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Tammy. Uh, mental health court is the, the same thing. Uh, we have the mental health court grant that we came uh, previously, received the um, permission from this board to go ahead and apply. We applied. Um, we've been granted the 
195000 to operate the mental health court uh, grant. Just looking for the approval to accept. Move to approve to accept the 2016 grant for mental health. Motion and support. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you. JC. Monthly report. Good morning. Quick overview of monthly report, and I'll have Joe cover quite a bit. This is longer than usual because we've included several engineering items that um, kind of give you an overview. One of the concerns that I've heard in the past is that we didn't know what was on the radar screen for next year and uh, even the following year. So Joe's done a nice job from item 13 onward on page 3 of covering uh, each year's projects, 2015, 2016, even into 2017. The new transportation improvement plan, the TIP, is under development at this time, so we're working with our staff internally, and we'll make sure to keep you apprised of the projects that are included in that. So real quick, a few cover items on pages one and two. We have several new uh, team members. Uh, Bob's been working hard with our operations team to bring on four full-time and six seasonal employees um, for the winter season here. Uh, and also two mechanics positions. So one thing that's nice is that we're seeing an enhanced uh, applicant pool. Uh, we've even had applicants from neighboring uh, road agencies. So um, that's always a delicate matter, but uh, employees choose where they want to work, of course. So we're doing uh, still continuing with shoulder restoration in preparation for 2016 projects. So it's really nice to see our team working uh, ahead, looking ahead. So just want you to be aware on these roads that if you get complaints about um, basically pulling berm, we call it, for slang, where we grade the edges and, and um, enhance drainage off of the road surface, uh, it's uh, sometimes a controversial thing, but uh, technically uh, it's important to reclaim that surface area, especially for drainage and also motorist safety. Uh, we're going to get it anyway with snow plows, is the truth of the matter, uh, with the wings uh, being down on some of our new trucks. So um, it's important to just have that area to work. Cooper and Losi are completed. We're happy to report that. And winter preparations are well underway. Snow could hit any time. So the crew has been very busy putting salt or sanders on. And our early fill delivery of uh, salt has been delivered for um, the state work. Um, we have been liquidating some of our old junk, I would say, in quotes. Uh, these are non-operational vehicles, basically, and definitely things we have in the yard that we will not use. Uh, so those items have been disappearing to make room and um, basically avoid the salvage yard appearance of our facility. Better to have the cash in pocket than uh, some of that stuff sitting around. Adopt a highway is well underway. Uh, it has been for quite a while. That's our MDOT contract, where our state crews are out picking up the trash bags from the volunteers' work and so forth. Um, shoulder repair has been ongoing on 127 and US 12, and uh, we have been doing some wedge patching, and that was completed actually in mid-October on Gordon Road. Item 11 I wanted to give you a more detailed update on. We uh, are all set to move that guardrail back. Plans are in place, and the long story short is we are hiring a contractor to do the post setting. We don't have the right equipment to drive posts in a straight line. We would have to auger them with a skid steer or some other method. So we felt it was important to bring pros in to do that properly. We did try to rent the equipment. However, it's just not available, not anytime soon anyway. So we did get quotes, and we were pleasantly surprised with the pricing on those. Um, for, uh, I think it was on the order of four or $5,000, they'll come out and in two days basically have all the posts moved for us. So very favorable. And our crews will basically unbolt the existing rail and rebolt it back on. This project will take only a week. Uh, we expect on Monday to have the contractor out. Um, basically our crews would take the guardrail off the first day and the, con the contractor would move in on Tuesday, set the post back. Meanwhile, our contractors work on the other side of the road taking the rail off. Um, and then they come over and move those posts on the uh, third day. So in four days, um, weather permitting, we would have this project done. And you're probably wondering, well, which week? And we are too. 
basically um, the contractors that all gave us quotes are all pushed out basically to the end of November with uh, other projects so we're hoping to get them in right after Thanksgiving uh, that first week of December ideally before uh, ground freezes of course so um, if things go well we will have this done by our next uh, series of board meetings and I'll be hopefully reporting that that we're all set any questions on those items Chris just one question I'm looking at a note on the Beach Road culvert that was replaced recently and it appears that somebody is continually going in and trying to dam it up to raise Mud Lake does that jeopardize the work that we've done at all there and what's being done proactively to stop that if anything I'm going to defer to Joe. I wanted him to cover his engineering items if that was okay, but I'll have you answer that question and then just segue into some highlights on your engineering items. Is that okay, Joe? Okay, I'll step aside here. Yeah, the, uh, that was a long overdue project to get that culvert put in, and it wasn't a day later that the uh, foreman was driving by and then he saw somebody put a um, number of sandbags and boulders in the upstream part of that culvert. And, and if you know the topography of that area, there's not really a defined ditch. So any blockage you put in that culvert is going to spew out over a considerable area. Um, I don't know what the point was. We've contacted the DEQ. They said keep an eye on it. So we, we sent uh, the foreman, pulled the sandbags, and moved the boulders out of the way. And about two days later, they were put back in. So we don't know what uh, is going on there. We've tried to contact the... Uh, the, the Mud Lake Homeowners Association to see who's doing this, you know, to keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, but as of right now, we don't really have an answer as to who's doing it and why. I mean, uh, we understand that the culvert had to be put back in at the same elevations. Um, they say it's lower, which technically it is because it's recessed into the ground a little bit so you can have some fish spawning through there and they wanted the um, Commissioner Duckham you remember they wanted that culvert raised up about a foot above the existing flow line um, which the DEQ would not accept so that's why it's in the location that it is to uh, allow the fish and the, the other animals to get back up and downstream there but uh, we're not exactly sure why somebody is going out there and, and blocking that culvert um, the same as they did when the old culvert was there. Um, in Christopher's monthly report there, item number 13, uh, there's just um, a number of things. The federal aid projects this year's are pretty much completed. Um, the Hague Avenue Bridge, Boardman Road, our chip seal and fog seal projects and then also the guardrail replacement of five other locations in the county. Um, 2016 Fifth Street, that's, um, we're still waiting on the railroad here. I, I did get a call, actually I called the Philadelphia office and they talked to me. Um, she says the permits are reviewed in the order that they are received. Um, and I asked her if there's anything I can do uh, to help things out on our end. She says, not unless you can get me a couple of more people in here because I review the permits for the entire country, not just for Jackson County. So <laughs> she technically has 30 days to, to issue the permit to enter. And then once that's done, then we have to submit the plans for review. And the, there's another 30 days on top of that. And then if there are any revisions, then revised plans have to be sent in, and then that's an, an additional 30 days on top of that. So it's certainly not a quick process by any stretch of the imagination. We're just hoping to get there. That's <laughs> We can't get to that finish line fast enough to get that contract awarded. So that's kind of what we're waiting for on Fifth Street. Um, Robinson Road, we did send our preliminary plans up to MDOT on Friday. We are going to go to the um, Summit Township Board meeting tomorrow and uh, do a little review. So we've got an 80% um, set of plans. We will go over everything. Um, we were able to put in the roll curb there that we talked about a couple of weeks ago with Com Commissioner Shotwell and Supervisor Dunn. So um, that is in the design. Um, we have left turn lanes at Main Street, uh, Commons Boulevard, the large uh, apartment complex out there. Kirkwood, which is the large subdivision on the west, and also at Morrell Street. 
And uh, so we're going to see, uh, we're trying to get a great inspection towards the end of the month and uh, bid this in April and start in mid-May. Um, Deering Road, that's, um, that's going to go through, the, uh, get approved by the Region 2 Planning Commission at their annual meeting next month. And then uh, that will be sent off to MDOT and Federal Highway. And that's all the way from County Farm to M60. We were able to um, add on to the, uh, the original part of the Deering Road project. So that's why there's going to be a scope change in there too. Um, it's an all-season road. And uh, maybe you know or maybe you forgot, but on all-season roads, we can use state D money to pay our match. So that's uh, dollars that don't have to come out of our checkbook there. So that's always a good thing. Um, and then uh, we have Mount Hope Road and um, Francisco slash Clear Lake Road. We're going to put in the tip for um, next year. And then, of course, the West, Mi West Michigan Avenue Bridge over the railroad. Um, that's another issue with the railroad uh, company there. Um, our consulting engineer had his very preliminary plans approved by MDOT. Uh, we sat down with MDOT's rail division shortly after, and they said, well, not so fast. We want to put in another line of tracks down through there, so you're going to have to redesign your bridge. And uh, not only that, there's a fiber optics that runs in the way, and that goes all the way from Chicago to Detroit. It's got the big three auto corporations on it, and uh, you're going to have to pay to move that. So <laughs> things are... Um, kind of in a state of flux here right now with that bridge. Um, moving along into 17, uh, we, ha we have the other section of Robinson Road, a um, couple other roads up in Rives Township, Berry Road and Rives Eaton Road, and then we're going to Cold Mill and Resurface East Michigan that goes underneath the railroad tracks out there uh, east of Portage Road, and then Wedge and Chip Seal and Fog Seal about five miles of West Michigan Ave from Glasgow Road to the Parma Village. Now Glasgow Road is the, that's the boundary line between the urban and the rural areas there. So you can't spend rural money in the urban area or vice versa. So that's why we're um, starting at Glasgow. Oh, sorry, Ed. And then we're working with the team uh, to create our projects for the new tip that's upcoming, 2018 to 2020. And uh, we'll probably start, uh, we actually we sat down a couple of times, we'll probably get, um, sit back down this week as well. And then just some other miscellaneous items on there, bridge inspections are up to date. We want to start on phase three of the human services building with that parking lot expansion for next year. Um, a couple of fatals and stop sign requests, beauty roads. And we had a gasoline spill here a couple of weeks ago at the Bob's Country Store out there in Summit Township. Wasn't near as bad as they first thought, so um, that ended up okay. Um, I think there's a meeting today with uh, Captain Maurer and, uh, and, and JDOT here about the transportation of half a million cubic yards of material, so we'll see how that goes. And then... Beach Road culvert. We do have some other culverts too that uh, we're in the process of uh, getting engineered. Uh, Folks Road, Kimmel Road, Greenwood Road, and Blackman Road. So we're working on those. Any questions for Joe on that overview? We will prepare a map also and get that to you because that'll be very useful for each of the coming years and the projects. A couple more comments. Joe mentioned the um, Robinson Road project. Um, one of the new things that we're trying to do is get out and talk with townships at the 30% plan development level, very preliminary, barely lines on paper, and then moving to a 60% level as things move along maybe a month or two later with design and then finally at a 90 percent level uh, which, which, which would be literally before the plans are signed and let out for bids just for any final changes or input from townships so um, that is something we have not done in the past but we will make sure to do in the future and lastly on the new funding package that the legislature and um, uh, Senate have, have approved. Uh, all I can say is that, um, thank heavens, we can plan now. Um, it's, uh, you've, of course, we're not going to receive the full funding until 2021, I believe, and we'll receive no new money until 2017. However, at least uh, we can look out and project 
for staffing and for projects. So I'm actually waiting for details on how much money that will mean for Jackson County. Uh, and I'll make sure to keep you in the loop as, as that information becomes available. Any final questions? Thank you, Chris. Uh, just a question for you. and uh, On Hague Road Bridge, observations from some of the neighbors and people who travel it a lot. Is it off-center? Or is that an optical illusion the way the lines come up to it? Because people are saying that they're drifting when they're traveling south. They're drifting into the northbound lane when they travel over that bridge. You know, we did get a call on that a month or so ago. It, it, it is an optical illusion. What, uh, what Dan thinks is that the, uh, when the pavement marking contractor painted the road there, it, it may be just a little skewed going across the bridge instead of very parallel with the center line of the road. It's probably uh, on a little bit of a skew, and it, it makes it look that way. Uh, but the, I mean, the, the, the abutments and the beams and everything, it's, it's in the exact location of where it's supposed to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Julie, succinctly, yeah. Thank you. Christopher, I would like to publicly thank you and your team that um, took the time uh, to prepare for a um, town hall meeting in Spring Arbor Township. Your presentation to the residents who are really frustrated with the condition of their subdivision roads. Uh, your presentation was thorough, it was professional, and I understand that, you know, it does take time to put those pieces together to prepare that kind of presentation, and I would just like to thank you and your team. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure giving that discussion. It always feels good to educate people and to help, help them understand our plight and that we really do want to help them. Um, I think that's eye-opening for them. Um, perhaps the per perception in the public is that we're just um, not interested or don't care, but that nothing could be further from the truth, in all honesty. So, thank you. Okay, other questions or comments? Hearing none, moving on to the abandonment, vacate, and discontinue parts of public highways. The uh, property owner came to us, and uh, they have four lots out in this plat in Norville Township, Sunset Beach, and, and uh, they have a 10-foot wide by 40-foot long walkway that they want to abandon. And the township has incorporated all four of these lots into one contiguous lot, and so there's really not any significant issues of why that cannot be abandoned. So we are making recommendations to do so. I thought of this question last night when I was looking at this. Do we ever sell property like this versus abandon it? And is there ever a reason to do that, or are we allowed to, or should we, for that matter? Because I would certainly think that if there is a way to do that, it would help our roads maybe just to a small degree. But Well, in some circumstances that could be. Um, a little sliver like that, I'm, I'm not as sure what the advantage would be, but uh, there's got to be some cases out there. Maybe if it's if you have a 66-foot wide and, and that, you know a, a much larger piece, you might be able to do that. Yeah, I don't necessarily mean this one, but uh, like you say, certainly there are larger pieces that I wonder if we'd be wise to consider doing that if somebody wants it uh, and put it back into roads versus just abandoning it if that's allowed. But not that, I, again, I think it should apply to this, but I wanted to ask that question anyway. So. Uh, anything additional? Mike? Could you describe for the board the process of what has to happen in order to make this happen? Because isn't the isn't circuit court involved in this one here? Well, uh, that, that's why I kind of asked Scott Ames to be here, too, because he was at a presentation a couple of months ago about these abandonment proceedings. And, uh, I mean, since January 1st of 1968, there's been a law, evidently, that uh, it, it, you, the road agency can initially approve the abandonment process, but that only gives up the public's right away to use the parcel, but it doesn't divide up the property to the adjoining property owners. And then it has to go to circuit court for the second step proceedings, and then following that, and then the plat has to be amended. So it's a three-step process now. And, uh, and I have explained that to this property owner here. He was kind of upset that it didn't, 
I didn't get this through on the October meeting because he wants to get a building permit to start building his home, and he can't do that till this is done. But uh, maybe it's yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, and I was going to say, and that's due, it's because it's platted property as opposed to, you know. Yes, platted. yes. Well, Joe, who, who's responsible for taking those secondary steps to circuit court and paying for them? Would that be us or the property? Oh, that would be the property owner. I see. Okay, and your recommendation is obviously that we approve this abandonment? Yes. Okay, commissioners, any additional comments or questions? And I think we'd be looking to send this on to the full board. Is that accurate, Mike? Go to the full board, yes. right? Yep. Be look. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Joe. I think you got one more thing, do you not? Or Chris does. JC dot truck bid and lease to purchase agreement. All right, uh, this uh, item is uh, something we discussed, if you recall, at our September 1st study session. We gave you an overview of our 70 plow truck fleet and uh, how uh, we've identified critical and compelling issues for our agency, how uh, basically we're throwing good money after bad by uh, trying to band-aid the uh, fleet year after year to the tune of four to six hundred thousand dollars a year of excess maintenance above and beyond proactive repairs and so forth. So a 10-year capital plan was presented where we showed um, expenditure neutral fiscal impacts by utilizing uh, uh, taking advantage of low interest rates right now and uh, implementing a seven-year lease to purchase financing component. Uh, the first year is aggressive to help get us caught up and get the plan rolling with 14 trucks and then we'll skip a year and then implement a seven year replacement. Uh, simple math, 70 trucks, 10 years, we should be doing uh, seven trucks minimum per year. So the bottom line is uh, the committee got to work and uh, pulled together the bids. Uh, there's two bid pieces, the chassis um, for um, I was trying to get my numbers right here when I started up here. We have six tandem, axle, tandem axles, the larger trucks with higher weight capacity, and uh, eight single axles. And one reason that they chose to throw in the single axle trucks that are slightly less expensive is maneuverability. Uh, we find that uh, both now and in the future that the single axle trucks as designed today actually have a tighter turn radius and uh, will help in the future as we go through subdivisions and private roads and so forth. But also on the state crews, um, also are very, very helpful. The, uh, the bids were very favorable. We were pleased for the, the chassis and you can see the pricing there in our motions requested. Um, and the, uh, the body builds, the second component, uh, the chassis should arrive basically in about three months or so, we're being told, if the order's placed now. And then they basically ship straight off to a, a body build company that customizes the truck and adds all of our equipment. Those bids came off of my deal. So all we had to do is basically take those line item prices and request detailed quotes with our particular specifications. We are asking for wing plows on all the trucks. Wing plows are, are a great way to leverage our limited resources so that in a single pass we can get a wider swath, clear the shoulders. Um, and we're also implementing a variety of technology, safety-wise, uh, backup cameras uh, that are self-washing in a bubble uh, so they can see what's going on behind them. Uh, also monitoring systems for knowing if blades are up or down. Um, also uh, salter on and off so that through our GPS system we'll be able to see and read all that information. Um, one idea that's being explored, we haven't made a final decision on, is a laser beam that would show where that wing plow is so that drivers know uh, with guidance basically um, where their wing will go. We hope that will help minimize impacts to mailboxes and, and other uh, roadside appurtenances. So uh, the My Deal component was pretty straightforward and those quotes are attached. Uh, it is a dizzying array of specifications, numbers, and information. I apologize for that, but uh, that is the rocket science behind this. And the third item is the lease, lease to purchase component. Um, 
we do have a favorable quote from Ford Credit, which basically piggybacks on Calhoun's arrangement with Ford Motor Credit for their fleet. They've been using them for a number of years, and they've gone through the vetting process of getting quotes, and the interest rate matches basically what they've just done with eight new trucks. So we do find that favorable. However, I'm not giving up. Uh, my hope is to this week continue to work with local banks and getting proposals. I'll be talking further with uh, Jim Latham, our finance director, about that, uh, just to see if we can't get a, a better quote from, from local financial in institutions. It'd be nice to keep at least one piece of this as local as possible. Uh, the financing component makes total sense. So I did get some uh, documents from other managers around the state uh, that, that they've uh, done. Um, and I have to say that uh, we are doing something very cutting edge, very um, aggressive, but um, especially with the passage of the road funding program, uh, it's definitely the right thing to do. So again, this is expenditure neutral. Everything is reimbursable through the MDOT contract for the first two years on these trucks. You might recall we get 60% financing, or excuse me, depreciation covered. And then after the two years, that third year, we roll it into the local road fleet. So basically the county would, would get trucks at about uh, uh, 40 40 cents on the dollar. And again, this is just informational. We'll cover this again in personnel and finance, I believe, for approval. But I'm available for questions. Okay, Mike, do we need to approve this here if it's going through personnel and finance or not just informational here? It's informational. Okay. Commissioners, any questions uh, of Chris? Julie? No, other than I, I'm pleased to hear that you're going to contact local you know, finance institutions here in our community. Good. Thank you. So the motion requested on that note um, basically is authorization for the board chairman to sign the necessary lease to purchase loan documents, which we already have one proposal in the bag. We certainly wouldn't take any terms that are not at least that favorable, um, but that would authorize the chairman to also sign more favorable or equally favorable local institution documents. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Okay, I think that takes us down to claims. You looking for a motion? Support. Motion and support. Questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Uh, you have the December reporting schedule. Takes us back to public comments. Hello, public. Mr. Bormuth. Um, just wanted to comment on uh, that road bill that our Senate and House passed. Um, like, it, it's good that we do finally have a road bill, but this is a terrible package. It is an act of cowardice um, by shifting over that uh, $600 million to the future. It um, hits the citizens um, harder than it should with the increase in registration uh, fees, and it's going to be resented greatly by our citizens. So I, I just want to make that comment. It, it, it's just inconceivable to me that they couldn't put together a better road bill than this. Thank you, Mr. Brown. With any other public comments? Hearing none, committee member comments. Hearing none, we're adjourned.